Father God, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity just to, um, just to hear more of your word, Father, of who you are, Lord. We pray that you just bless Pastor Chance, Lord, that you would just hide them behind your cross, Father, that when we look upon them, Lord, that we would see you, we would hear your word, Lord, and it would touch hearts, it would touch minds, Father. And most importantly, it would draw men unto you, Father. We thank you. We give you all glory and all praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Look, after, uh, after Pastor Chance is done at the end of the service, we're going to collect a second offering just because we want to bless Pastor Chance. Amen? amen. So just keep that in mind. Amen. Pastor Chance. Come on, can we put our hands together for Jesus this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. It's great to be at One Accord Ministries again. I think I came through last year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't know about you, but this is my favorite place to be. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad you're here. Come on. Look at your other neighbor and say, I love my church. I I do. I love this church. Pastor Andy, we greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm sure you're watching online. You and Ashley, we love you. God bless you. If I lived in, in um, this state, I'd probably come to this church. Come on, somebody. We love you. Um, what, what's the name? Uh, Miss Grace. What's her name? Gianna. Hey, good morning, Gianna. Welcome to this world. Amen. <laughs> A great grace be upon you and your family today. We love you, Pastor Andy and um, Ashley. Man, look at your neighbor and say, I love you. I don't know. I'm just trying to stir something up this morning. That's a pickup line for somebody. I don't know. I do. I love this church. My family is with me, but they're at the hotel. Y'all forgive them, okay? Uh, my wife, Casey, and our four kids, um, we're traveling. We're at the end of a 12-day road trip. We're from Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm an evangelist. It's their fall break. We're out on the road having some fun. We've rocked Atlanta, Dallas-Fort Worth, Houston, and now we're in the great state of Louisiana. Come on, somebody. The Lord save the best for last. And I'm going to try to behave today, okay? I know Andy's not here, but I stopped at the best stop. Anybody know anything about the best stop? Got me a pound of cracklings and some boudin balls. Hallelujah. Whew, I about didn't get out of bed this morning. Come on, we went to Parkway, I don't even know, we got a po' boy, it was like 12 pounds, man I'm serious, I about, I about didn't get out of bed this morning, I love this state, y'all have some of the best food in the world, amen, and I'm happy, everybody say I'm happy, turn your frown upside down, can we have some fun here today, I don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to have some fun, it's the number one rule, if you want to have some fun, wave at me. Hallelujah. Some of y'all ain't smiling, and that's okay. I'm smiling because I know something you don't know. You about to get hit with the Holy Ghost. Amen? And your life is never going to be the same. I think one of the greatest gifts we could give one another is encouragement. Amen? Some of you just got saved. Some of you have been saved um, for quite some time. But, we, I, you know, I came to shoot you up with faith today. Wow. That you would leave better than you came. And because uh, we all fight battles and, and we all have wars. We've all got stuff going on. Some of you are fighting on the way to church service this morning. <laughs> Amen. But I want to say it's okay. God is faithful. And if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Somebody say amen. amen. Today's a new, it's a new season. It's a new day. Come on. And only God can do something like, you know, he can, he can, just, he can just make all things new. Yeah. And I believe he's going to do that for you today. Amen. Like I said, it's the end of, of a road trip. So I've only got a few books and a few hats in the back. But I wanted to make a um, highlight of this really quick. I got radically saved. Everybody say, I got saved. I got radically saved. On April the 30th, 2003. So it's been 20 years um, since, since I got saved. And I, and I wrote a book. Everybody say, it's a miracle. <laughs> like, for real. I wrote a book in honor of, of, of Teen Challenge, really. Um, I got saved in Teen Challenge. And, and, and we were talking in the back. Um, David Wilkerson, many of you know who he is. His brother Don is still alive, and they co-founded um, Times Square Church 
in the ministry of Teen Challenge. And uh, Don Wilkerson, he wrote the foreword to this book. It's a 40-day devotional to help overcome addiction. And it's called On the Road to Recovery. And so I'm going to let you all fight. There's like three back there, okay? And so everybody say free. free. They ain't free, all right? Have you seen gas prices? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> they're $200 a piece. I'm just kidding. They're $20. They're $20. Y'all are still not laughing. <laughs> they're $20. And there's a few in the back. And there's a couple of revival hats. And there's another book that I wrote first. And so if you guys want one of them, this book right here will knock you off your sofa. Come on, somebody. And so grab one on the way back. And uh, if you will, this morning, go ahead and grab your Bible and turn wherever you want to. So I'm going to preach Genesis through Revelation, all right? And um, 2 Kings chapter 9, if you can flip there really fast. Uh, I want to I read out of the Bible this morning. And uh, I just want to read a little story. And um, I'm going to pull out some principles um, concerning uh, the turnaround anointing. And I'm not going to read the whole story for sake of time. But I just want to give you some context. And get this plane off the runway. Everybody say, I love my Bible. I need to read it more. more. Look at your neighbor and say, my Bible's better than yours. Come on, somebody. (laughs) Some of y'all still not laughing. Now, y'all need some coffee. (laughs) 2 Kings chapter 9. Can we stand to our feet as that is our custom and read the first um, seven verses just to honor God's word? I was a youth pastor for quite some time, and... I used to tell my kids almost every Sunday, if you want to hear from God, all you have to do is open his mouth. And a lot of people say, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't hear from God. Well, you know, when you can't hear God, you read God. And the Bible is God's mouth. If you open this book right here, I promise you, he'll speak to you. Everybody say, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. I'm listening. I love this story. Verse, verse 1, 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 1 through 7. And Elisha, the prophet, called one of the sons of the prophets and said to him, Get yourself ready. Everybody say, get ready. Get ready. And take this flask of oil. I don't see one, but we, we might could find one. And put it in your hand and go to Gilead. And now when you arrive at that place, look there for Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, and go in and make him rise up among his associates and take him by the hand and take him into the inner room. And then take the flask of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus saith the Lord, I have anointed you king over Israel. Then open the barn door and flee. Do not delay. So he did. Verse 5. When he arrived, there were the captains of the army and they were sitting there. And he said, I have a message for you, commander. For who? For Jehu. For you, sir. Then he arose. And I love this part. He went into the secret place. And he poured the flask of oil on his head. And said to him, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, I have anointed ye, you king over Israel. And you shall strike down the house of Ahab. And you will avenge the blood of the prophets. And all the servants of the Lord from the hand of Jezebel. Verse 17. I want to skip just a minute, but, it, but just to give you some understanding, during this encounter, there was a young man. And I believe the Lord is raising up young men and women, sons and daughters in this hour. Amen? And he sent this. It was Elisha. He was the the prophet and he had a school of the prophets and he got a word from God. And he gave it to a young man and said, you go. I'm telling you, we got to put the go back into the gospel. Somebody say amen. He said, you go to Jezreel and dethrone the enemy, which was King Joram and his wicked mother, Queen Jezebel. So what did he do? He got a word from God and he got on his horse. Come on, somebody. And he rode 
to the capital city. Let me finish the story. Verse 17. Now a watchman stood on the tower of the city Jezreel. And he saw the company of Jehu. And as they came, he said, Sir, I see a company of men coming. And King Joram said, Now quickly get a horseman. And send him across the valley and meet him and let him say, do you come in peace? Stay with me. So without delay, the horsemen went out to meet him and said, thus saith the king, do you come in peace? And Jehu said, what do you know about peace? Turn around and follow me. Everybody say, turn around, turn around. and follow me. follow me. This was the first wave of opposition to try and keep Jehu from fulfilling his purpose so the watchman came back and reported to the king saying the messenger went out but he didn't come back what do we do so he proceeded to send out a second horseman you can read the whole story later this week second king chapter 9 and the king said send out another so he sent out another servant and the servant said do you come in peace and Jehu said what do you know about peace turn around and follow me so king King Joram saw that two servants were turned around. So what did he do? He got on a horse himself and rode out to meet Jehu. And this is what happened. When Joram saw Jehu, he said, have you come in peace? There, there's a cycle here. What peace? As long as you're hearted of a mother, Jezebel is on the house. In the house, we will have no peace when her witchcraft is so many. He played the yo mama card. Come on, somebody. You can mess with anybody, but you don't mess with my wife, my kids, or my mama. That's the truth. Hallelujah. And so Jehu finally made it. I'm telling you, he killed the king with his bow and arrow. And he made it to the city. He finally made it. And Jezebel quickly heard so she painted her, her eyes like some of you this morning. And she had ordained her head with a hat. Come on. And she looked through the window. And as Jehu entered the gate, she said, Have you come in peace? And I'm going somewhere with this this morning. And, she, and, and Jehu said, I, 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 As long as your wicked mother is on the throne, we will have no peace. And three little eunuchs stuck their head out the window and looked down at him. And Jehu said, throw Jezebel down right now. So they threw her out the window. I'm sorry, her head splattered on the wall. This is scripture. And when they buried her, all that was left was her hands, her feet, and her skull. Let's talk about this Old Testament story. Can we pray? Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. I thank you for this great church. God, I thank you for this city. I thank you for this state. I thank you for every man and woman and kid alike in this sanctuary. And I just pray, Lord, that you would speak to us today. That you would challenge us, that you would change us, and that we would walk away knowing that we have been in the presence of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody would say, Amen. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Three times the same question arises. Do you come in peace? What do you know about peace? Turn around and follow me. Just for a few minutes this morning, I want to talk about the turn around anointing. But for the sake of the young people in the crowd, I want to say it. A little differently we're going to get turned come on somebody I don't know what that means just ask anybody up under the age of 18 we're going to get turned uh, okay we're, we're, we're going to get we're going to get turned this, this, this word right here is going to turn you around it's in the urban, urban dictionary come on somebody I'm telling you Jehu was anointed with the turn around anointed anointing uh, can you just give somebody a little high five like next to you amen and say and say the Lord is going to turn your situation around I, I know we've done that three times but it's three times in the scripture right here I just want to break it down everybody say break it down I'm going to go back to the beginning because the Bible says Lucifer I'm going to teach and then I'm going to preach was was one of the three archangels 
in heaven. Along with Gabriel, the postmaster, he delivered the messages of God. He appeared to Mary and said, you're going to have a son. You're going to be overshadowed with the Holy Spirit. And you're going to name him Jesus. And he's going to save the world from their sins. Somebody say amen. Amen. And Gabriel, he still delivers the messages of God. And then we see Michael. He he led the militant angels. He fights for you and me in the heavenlies. He oversees a third of the angels. And they are warriors. They are mighty. And they are strong. And then there was Lucifer. And Lucifer was the anointed cherub. He was anointed to lead all of the, the, the choirs of heaven. He was the choir director. And you can read his story if you've never done it in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28 you need to read these two stories but the Bible says Lucifer was perfect in beauty the model of perfection and he he walked among the precious stones and he dwelt in the holy mountain of God and and he was blameless in all of his ways until wickedness was found in him what happened next verse 17 God Kicked him out of heaven. Another translation says, by the finger of God. Amen. He, God gave Satan the finger. D- don't make me do an illustrated message this morning. Amen. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit can kick Satan out of, uh, uh, out of your situation so fast. And the Bible says, he fell like lightning. Boom. Amen. Satan has a little power, but God has all the power. And Lucifer carries a counterfeit anointing. Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 through 14, the Bible teaches us that when Lucifer fell, he turned one-third of the angels around from worshiping God. And now those angels are demons. The same demons that afflict the the people of old are, are the same demons that afflict you and me today. Amen? The, 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 Counterfeit anointing is real, but the turnaround anointing is too. Come on, somebody. And Satan uses all of his energy today to keep people, amen, from worshiping the one and true living God that dwells in heaven. He tries to get you and I to turn around from fulfilling our God-given destiny But as we see in this story, there's another type of anointing. And I feel it in this house this morning. Come on, somebody. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. And here's what I want you to see. Satan is real. Demons are real. Angels are real. Our God is alive. Amen. And as we pick up this story, Elisha receives a word For Jehu, the commander of the armies of Israel. And and, and he's sitting in a circle. And I want to call it a religious circle. Because these men, if you you read the context of the chapter, the the nation was in a bad place. And and, and there's unrighteous people leading the nation. And and Jehu and and the commanders are sitting in in a circle. And I'm, I'm thinking they're talking about the good old days when David and Solomon were, was on the throne. They were thonk, talking about what God used to do. And all of a sudden, this, this man breaks into the barracks and he's holding a flask of oil. And he says, who's Jehu? And Jehu breaks out of the circle. He stands up and goes into the secret place with this mysterious man. And I want to call this man the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. He's not named. Nobody knows who he is. He grabs this young man by the hand and he goes into the secret place. And I want to say this morning, what you do in private is way more important than what you do in public. Amen? You are who you are when nobody else is around. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit is applied to a person's life when nobody else is looking. The secret is in the secret place. Amen. And he goes into the inner chambers, the King James says. And and, and it says five quarts. It's a little over a gallon of oil is poured on his head. I'm not going to do that to anybody here today, okay. But from the top of his head... To the soles of his feet, 
this young man is, is dripping. Come on, somebody. <laughs> that just came up. He, I mean, it's just running down his head and his beard and his clothes. And when he comes out of the chamber, his friends say, what just happened to you? And Jehu says, what do you mean? And he says something, there's something different about you. And I want to say, when you spend time with God and you read your Bible and you're doing the, the private practices and the disciplines every day, you won't have to stand with a white cross in the middle of Bourbon Street. Come on, somebody. People will know that there is something different about your life. You won't have to quote scriptures. You won't have to walk around and be a Bible thumper, waving it all. You won't have to say a word. They'll be able to look and see the light inside of your eyes. And when you walk by, they'll feel something on the inside. Why? Because you're anointed from the, amen, with the Holy Spirit. This is what happens when you live your life with character and integrity in the secret place. It was the same for Jehu. Is anybody awake? Wave at me this morning. I'm telling you, one word from God can change your life forever. And I know what I'm talking about. Because all of a sudden, Jehu says, that man just told me I was going to be king. And boom, as soon as he, he made the statement... The turnaround anointing hit his friends. And they stand up and they start playing the harp and the flute. They take off their coats and they, they, they make a, a, an entourage. They slide into their horses and they start riding to the capital. One word. It wasn't the fulfillment of the word that turned their life around. It was believing the word. Amen? Amen. These men didn't have anything. They didn't have any connections in the capital. They didn't know what they were going to do. All they did was believe the word. They believed the word of God for their life. Who am I talking to this morning? It's not the fulfillment of the word. God spoke. He's spoken to all of us. He's told us and he's done so much. But he wants to do so much more. Oh, so many people hit the snooze button on their destiny nine minutes at a time. Stop hitting the snooze button, amen? It's time for you to come alive and believe the word of God that is being spoken over your life. I feel like preaching in here this morning, amen? It was the word. The word hadn't been fulfilled. It had just been spoken. And he stood up. And they put feet to their faith. And they marched to the capital that day. I love this story because you're going to see a cycle as we read. Joe Realm is, 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 is fat and sassy. He's, he's sitting on his throne. And there comes a company of men. A mighty army. And I want to say I feel like I'm looking at Joel's army this morning. There's so many mighty men and women in this room. And some of you don't even know it yet. You don't even know what God's going to do in your life. You'll just get a hold of the word of God. It'll take you places that you would have never dreamed. Amen? Amen. I think I've been to ten nations this year. Traveling. I, I was a drug addict and an alcoholic. I didn't have enough money to get out of Greensboro. I'd smoked it all up. Come on, somebody. And I, 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 I've been in and out of jail for so long. And one day I felt something that I never felt before. I was, I was in Teen Challenge. I was a good Baptist. I was sitting in the back. And, and when the pastor stood up to preach that day, it was my first chapel service. And all of a sudden, I had been to church. As a matter of fact, the best drug I ever did is my parents drug me to church. Yeah. Like I was, I'm from Siler City. You can't get there from here. But, you know, Andy Griffith, they, they talked about going to Siler City. Aunt B actually lived there. She, when she retired, she moved to my hometown. She, she made us famous. But I was just, I was a part of a little church. And in my mind, I had a little God. I was baptized when I was eight. I, I, I just thought, I, church was just so religious to me. I had no idea that God loved me. 
and he had a plan for my life. I mean, my life was all about me. And I lived my life up until my 20s. And then all of a sudden, I figured out that I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> Amen. The, the sun doesn't revolve around the earth. The earth revolves around the sun. And it's Sunday, S-O-N. Come on, somebody. Today is the sun's day. Our life revolves around him. He's the epicenter of all creation. It's Jesus. Amen. And when I waved the white flag and I gave God everything, I mean, I might have made him Savior, but I definitely hadn't made him Lord. I was still playing games. I was thinking about this this morning. My kids are back at the hotel. They're playing, but I came to preach. Come on, somebody. I'm not playing games this morning. I'm here on assignment because I believe that there are world changers in this room. And Joel's army is standing before me. Hallelujah. And, I, and, and when, I, when I surrendered at 23, suddenly things began to change. And for me, that was the turnaround anointing. Boom! It hit me too. Amen? And it turned my whole life around. So Joram saw the mighty men come into town. And so he sent out a servant. And the servant said, do you come in peace? Okay? And Jehu said, what do you know about peace? Turn around and follow me. And boom, the anointing hit this man and he came out of the kingdom of darkness, if I can say it this way, and into God's marvelous light. He left one army and joined the king's army. Amen? Just like that. And I prophesy over you this morning that you are going to come into contact with people the next few days, the next few weeks, the next few months. And when they meet you, the turnaround anointing is going to hit them too. And they're going to, they're going to come out of their struggle. Amen. And be saved in the mighty name of Jesus. They're, they're, they're going to come out of sickness. And, and they're, boom, they're going to be healed. Amen. Because you carry an anointing. Just like these young men, that, that servant switched teams. I, they left Mississippi State and they joined the LSU. Come on, somebody. Can, can I just bring it, bring it on down? Boom. They were Tiger fans. Just like that. In one day, they, they switched teams. And then the king noticed that the servant didn't come back. And so he sent out another message. And I think this is so key. Because whenever the servant encountered Jehu... He said, sir, do you come in peace? And Jehu said, what do you know about peace? You turn around and follow me. And I love this because Jehu did not change his message. And we can't change our message. Don't stone the delivery boy. Amen. Nobody wants to know what I got to say, but everybody wants to know what God's got to say. And I'm just here to, I just read a little Bible story to you this morning. And, and I'm pulling out a principle that whenever the Holy Spirit touches your life, he turns things around. And Jehu did not change his message. And we cannot change our message. Amen. The first order of theology is there is a God and I'm not him. <laughs> There is a God, and if I knew it all, I would be God, and I don't know it all. <laughs> so if you think you know it all, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you don't. And the closer I get to God, the more I found out that the things that I don't know, Deuteronomy 29, 29, the secret things of God are reserved for God himself. Amen. There is a God, and I have to trust him. But number two, the second order of theology is God sent his son Jesus Christ to die for our sins. Jesus came to do what we could not do. Give yourself a break. You're doing way better than you're giving yourself credit for. You may not be where you want to be, but you're definitely not where you used to be. Am I preaching today? You've come so far. Give yourself some grace. Amen. God is slow in anger. He's quick to forgive. He's, he's, he, he's compassionate. He's long surf, suffering. He, he's patient with you and me. Amen. 
I'm telling you, every other religion in the world requires you to do something in order to get to God except Christianity. Christianity, God came down to us and he did what we could not do. Amen. Jesus plus nothing is everything. If you add something to the gospel, it's not the gospel. If you take something away from the gospel, it's not the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ is simple. In America, we, we complicate it. Trust me. I just got back from Pakistan. I think Pastor Andy posted some of the pictures. Um, it was a small crusade for us. It was about 50,000 people there. And most of them were Muslims. Uh, I've been to India, um, Spain, Amsterdam, Pakistan twice this year, South Africa. I leave for Brazil in a couple of, couple of weeks, and then I'm going to Hawaii. Come on, somebody. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to suffer for that one. Never been there before. But, but you know... So, so many people have never heard the gospel. And when I go there, I make it so simple. I try to make it so simple. Amen. The Bible says, whosoever will call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. The thief that hung on a cross, one guy he, on the left, he got left. But the guy on the right, he got it right. Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. Deathbed salvation was so simple. He didn't have time to do anything. He didn't have time to pray a prayer. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, amen, you shall be saved. And this is simple for you and me today. We can't change our message. <sighs> So many people are looking for more power. But I'm telling you, what we need today is more gospel. Because the gospel is the power of God unto those who will inherit salvation. If we'll preach the simple gospel, God will release his power in the place. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach myself happy up in here. I don't know how it feels out there, but it feels real good up here. Amen. He didn't change his message. And we can't change our message either. And here's where I wanted to be because I feel like there's so many here in this room this morning that you are closer to your breakthrough than you've ever been before. And when Satan sends out soldiers and sergeants and servants, there'll come a point in time whenever Satan will, will mount the horse himself. King Joram, two servants were turned around, and he gets a little upset now. So he gets on his horse, and he leaves the city, and he rides out to where Jehu and his, his little company of, uh, of, of, of the little band of brothers, amen, they come by say they're coming. Like, here they come, you know, and Satan, a t King, King Joram, a type of Satan, gets on his horse, and he tries to turn Jehu around. He tries to back him down. He tries to, he tries to use um, you know, mind games. And, and he's, he's, um, he's tempting him. And, and he's doing everything that he can to stop Jehu dead in his tracks. And, and I love what Jehu did. Jehu pulled out a bow and arrow. And, and he, he said, he said, Joe Rem, do you come in peace? And, and he said, what do, you, what do you know about peace? As long as your harlot of a mother is on the throne, we will have no peace in this nation. And, and Joram turned around and ran. And Jehu shot him in the back with the bow. And it came out his heart. And he killed the king on the battlefield that day. And the Lord spoke to me and said, Chance, we cannot play with sin. Somebody say amen. Amen. We can't nick sin. We can't coexist with sin. We, we, can't, we can't live like hell on Saturday and, and, and worship God on Sunday. We can't put on uh, a religious mask and act one way here and another way there. We, we can't, we can't uh, be in the secret place doing something that nobody else knows about and expecting to come out with the anointing. Is anybody with me here this morning? We, we, when, I'm telling you, we cannot play with sin. We have to, we have to 
put sin to death. Amen. I am crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But the life that I now live, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. Somebody say amen. Amen. And I understand. I got saved at 23. I know I'm talking fast today, but it's y'all's fault. Okay. Look at your neighbor and say it's your fault. All right. I'm just kidding. It's y'all's coffee around here. My gracious. Shata. You know... Everybody say, be real. real. I got some good notes in there, but I'm just going off the cuff, okay? Because, matter of fact, my third book is called The God of Second Chances. It's probably going to take me some time to to write. But it's my story, my struggle, my Savior. And for 10 years, 23 to 33, I struggled. This might not be your story. So many people get saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. They get turned around, <laughs> and they live for God, and, and, and they live free. You know, but that wasn't my story. My story was I struggled. And so I just want to give you a little hope. I used to be a drug dealer, now I'm a hope dealer. Come on, somebody. Like for 10 years, for 10 years, I struggled. I struggled with, with cigarettes. I struggled with, um, with alcohol. And, every, and I found out that first I was an alcoholic. If, 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 if I could not drink one beer, okay, I wouldn't go to the crack house. Yeah. It took me a long time to figure out me. Now, you got to be you, but this is for me. This is my story, and I'm sticking to it. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Like I, it took me a long time to figure out that Chance Walters, I, 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 I can't have a drink. And, and I wish I was like everybody else, but I can't have a drink. Because if I take one drink, I'll drink 12. And then 24. And then I'll be right down the tube. And I'll be right back in the crack house. And I'll be homeless. I know it happened to me over and over and over again. I was saved. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I was talking in tongues. And for a season, I was preaching. God, I'm telling you, this wasn't in my portfolio. This is not something that I wanted to do. This is something God called me to do. Amen? And I, he's, my, he, he's my king. This morning, I just say, yes, sir. Whatever you want me to do. Amen? But he had to consecrate me. And it took me 10 years. It took me 23 to 33. And then one day, something clicked. And I'll tell you how it happened. I got so tired of being the relapse king. Up one day, down the next day. I got so tired. I'd rather you be hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. I got spit out so many times. I got so tired. I got so tired of living my life that way. And so I said, I know what I'm going to do. I had fasted before. I went on a 21-day fast. Just juice. Come on. I almost died. <laughs> I think I'm going to die. And God was like, you need to. You need to die. <laughs> Stop nicking sin. I'm drinking like V8 juice. I'm just anything liquid for 21 days. And after that, I've never struggled. I can walk down the beer aisle. I can go anywhere. I can do anything. Amen. Thank you. This is God's story. Everybody look down at your feet and say, devil, the yoke's on you. The joke's on the devil, amen? The yoke's not on me this morning. It's on him. Something clicked when I was 33. Jesus gave his life at 33, amen? And I got married. That's my joke. Is, uh, I got married when I was 33. I, I, I gave my life over to my wife. Come on, somebody. And Jesus, he changed everything. Now I'm 43. I know I look 33. But I'm, I'm 43. Have I arrived? No. Am I more in love with Jesus today than I've ever been in my life? Oh, yes. Do I need him more today than I've ever needed b- before in my life? Oh, yes. I need him. Everybody say, I need him. I need him. I need him. And so if you're struggling with sin today... I don't know what, what other people have told you, but I want to tell you it's okay. You came here. Amen. That shows me something. Amen. Where sin abounds, grace abounds so much more. 
You're never too far away from God. I'm telling you, the turnaround anointing can fall on you today. And your life can never be the same. And I want to pray, amen. But I want you to see that King Joram, he, he, he died outside the city gate. And Jehu slipped in. And Queen Jezebel was looking out the window. And Jehu said, is there anybody up there on the Lord's side? And three little eunuchs stuck their head out the window. And a eunuch is somebody that the king has castrated so that he can trust them to be with the queen. So it's three unproductive people. Amen. They're in the queen's presence. The three most unlikely people to be used by God gets hit with the turnaround anointing. And God uses them too. And Jehu says, throw her down right now. And this is what I've learned. If the enemy cannot keep you from fulfilling your God-given destiny, he'll throw this at you. He'll throw that at you. But if he can't get you any other way, he'll use the Jezebel spirit. He'll use the system of perversion and wickedness within a nation. He'll send Jezebel. Jehu had to encounter this spirit. Lastly, there was waves of opposition coming, crashing upon him and his life. Wave after wave. We just read the whole story. Amen. 2 Kings chapter 9. The turnaround anointing. Every time Jehu came in contact with a person, the anointing hit him. And they change sides immediately, simultaneously. Amen. And I pray that God would interrupt your regular scheduled activities this week. Come on, somebody. And that he would use you in the most unlikely places. Some of you have been praying for family members and friends to be saved for a long time. But I prophesy over you today, they'll come home for Christmas. Come on, somebody. Because you are going to be anointed with the Holy Spirit today. The same people that were anointed in in Acts chapter 2 were the same people anointed in Acts chapter 4 and 8. It's not a one-time occurrence. That's why we show up on Sunday, right? To get filled with fresh oil. And I don't know about you, but I feel better just for being here. There's an anointing in this room. And the devil is being crushed under your feet. And these three eunuchs pick up Jezebel and throw her out the window. Amen. And she, she crushes her head right there for all to see. Can we stand to our feet this morning? I want to call the worship team. And I want to, I want to share this because so many people have never tied this together. We can just get some background music. I, I just want to, I want to pray. I, I feel like I came here specifically, maybe even for one person, and that's okay. Jesus was notorious for leaving the 99 and going after the one. And I don't know who I, I'm talking to today, but there's hope in this house. I don't know where you've been, what you've done, who you've been listening to. I don't know what the bottom line in your bank account says today. I don't care what the doctor has declared over you. Cancer, I don't care. Nothing is impossible to those who believe. You may be the relapse king like me. You and your wife, you may be on the verge of divorce. I don't know. I do know this. I don't know your name, but I know your pain because I've got my own. I've got things. Amen. I, I just know that where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. And there is peace. The word peace simply means in Hebrew, nothing missing, nothing broken. Do you come in peace? Do you, do you have peace? Is there, is there something missing this morning? Is there something broken? What do you know about peace? Turn around and follow me. I'm following Jesus. Amen. 
There's peace. It's flowing like a river this morning. And it's going to touch you. I promise you. Lift your hands right now. Lord, we just want to honor the Holy Spirit, the mysterious man who holds the flask of oil. I can anoint you. Amen. I can take out the anointing oil and I can... And I can anoint you, but it's so much more powerful. Whenever you make a commitment, when you get determined. Yes, I came today, but tomorrow morning I'm going to go in the secret place. And I'm, and I'm going to steal away. Five times Jesus stole away to the secret place. Amen. And prayed. And it was from that place that he found what he was looking for. Amen. There's a missing piece. My, my kids love to put puzzles together. And our life is, life is crazy just like yours. It, it seems like there's always, they put the puzzle together and there's always a missing piece. And they'll say, Daddy, Daddy, I'm missing one. <laughs> I'm, I'm missing one. And what do I do? I get down on my knees and, and I start looking with my daughters, my sons. And we look for the missing piece and today I want to tell you if you're if you're missing something if you're seeking if you're searching I want to tell you that Jesus Christ is the missing piece he's the very thing that you've been looking for this morning with every head bowed and every eye closed you were to say chance with every head bowed and every eye closed you, you were to say I need another chance I need, I, need an, I need another chance. I want you to lift both hands really high to the sky. One accord, we serve the God of second chances. I want you to tell God what you need this morning. Individually. You have not because you ask not your heavenly father I know when I go back to the hotel my kids are gonna meet me at the door and they're gonna lift up their hands what am I gonna do I'm gonna bend down and I'm gonna pick them up there's somebody here this morning you need to be you you need to be picked up I don't know who your daddy was but you've got a heavenly father that loves you more than you could ever imagine Give your life to Him this morning. Give your life to Him this morning. Feel the presence of the Lord. Just talk to Him for 10, 20 more seconds. Lord Jesus. Lande ke shede aha lobo robo se de randa shede aso roko se say Jesus today I give you my life I give you everything forgive me and set me free say tr I trust you I trust you I don't know but I trust you. And today, I ask for the turnaround anointing. I believe it. I receive it. In Jesus' name. Now quickly, if you have a situation that seems insurmountable if it seems in, insurmountable it, if you have a situation where if God doesn't show up I want to give you an opportunity to respond on the count of three I just want you to slip out of your seat if you gave your life to Jesus please tell the leadership of this church this week but if you have an insur insurmountable odds if you have a situation I want you to slip out of your seat. I just want you to come by faith. Many times as you move, God, God moves. 
You don't have to be prayed for by me. I want you to come over here to this altar and we're going to sing. Yes, I remember you. The anointing is here. The anointing is here. What you do 10 years, God can do in 10 seconds. I'm telling you, you can keep going back to the doctor or you can go to Jehovah Rapha, the, the God who heals. He can touch you. He can touch you. He can touch you. Sometimes Jesus touches you. I was reading my devotion this past week. There was a situation when a man reached out to touch Jesus. Some, there's sometimes you've got to touch Jesus. You've got to touch Jesus. The lady with the issue of blood reached out and touched the Him, the H I M. She reached out to touch Him. And suddenly, healing virtue flowed from Emmanuel's veins. And she was healed miraculously. Just lift your hands this morning. Just begin to pray. We worship you, Jesus. I'm not the healer, but Jesus is. Focus on him. I want you to pray. I want you to pray.
Lord saying he's going to put the pieces back together. He's going to put the pieces back together and the puzzle. Sing hallelujah. A thousand piece puzzle. You know, there's always a missing pieces. But the Lord, listen, one can set a thousand of life, but two, there's two. Set ten thousand. Stick close together. Stick close together. Arms are open wide. Nobody else understands. He's close to the brokenhearted. Mary was so cool. She was young. They were young. The day of the beginning. For the Lord, it's going to do great things. I bless him. Put the pieces back together in the name of Jesus. You know the right piece, Lord. It's not a counterfeit. It's not a counterfeit. Don't do what everybody else is doing. There's a high calling for you and your family. In Jesus' name, bless you today. Everybody lift your hands. Say, Lord, I give you my life. Because you can do so much more with it than I can. I give it to you. I've started. Now I'm committed. And now I know you're going to give me great success. Start. Stay committed. Great success. I'm committed. I'm committed. I'm committed. Lord, I just pray for every person here this morning. I just prophesied over a lady right here. When we were kids, we played on the merry-go-round. You know, we need to go back to childlike faith. We, 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 we take ourselves way too seriously. So go find you a merry-go-round this week. And just, just get back down on your knees and... and and play. Amen. Uh, this man over here with, with the crown on, it, on his shirt. He grabbed a hold of my arm. He said, Pastor, I just want you to know that this church changed my life. Amen. And I know there's so many more this morning. That, that this church, the church. Amen. The big C, the global church. God's moving and he's not finished. The next time I come back. Amen. If you allow me. And if you don't like me, it's not my fault. It's Pastor Andy's fault. I know you're watching. So he invited me back a second time. And, but the next time I come back, you're going to have testimonies of your whole family being said. Oh, you don't, Pastor, you don't, you don't know my family. Oh, man, you don't know my family. And I've watched my whole family tree get saved, baptized, and filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. And that's a big deal. Hallelujah. And so, Lord, I thank you for One Accord Ministries. I just thank you for touching sick bodies this morning. As Oral Roberts used to say, sometimes you don't see the healing instantaneously, but as you go, as they went, they were healed. Amen? And as you go today, something is going to happen in a mighty way. So, God, I just pray for any person that's believing you for a miracle financially, physically, emotionally, whatever it may be, Lord, I pray that you would meet their need and that they would come back next week with a mighty testimony. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen, my brothers and sisters. Uh, before before y'all leave, if the Lord puts it on your heart, 
we just want to bless uh, Pastor Chance, uh, you know, with the second offering. If anybody's led by the Holy Spirit, if the Lord puts it on your heart, uh, I know the word blessed so many of us today. And uh, we just want to give glory to God. And, uh, well, yeah, you, you can put it here. And also, uh, Brother Carlton, are you in the building? Can you come up and give a word uh, we have about the outreach that we have coming up next week by chance? Amen. Amen. So before y'all leave, I just want y'all to hear this word that Brother Carlton's going to share with us about what's going on. Um, I'm not sure of the date, but he's fixing he, October the 14th. Hey, how y'all doing today? Uh, Andy uh, will be coming October the 14th to the location of Vision in the Wilderness uh, in uh, and it will be coming October the 14th to the location of Vision in the Wilderness on 1226 uh, Lafayette Street in Homa, Louisiana. God has given us a building over there. It's a new location, and he's been using us to be a voice in the wilderness of that area. And Andy will be there October the 14th to uh, bless that area with word and song. And uh, Brother G is going to be, be there. So come on out and support. It's going to be an incredible time. We're going to have barbecue. It's going to be a phenomenal time. So come on out and support and uh, just enjoy a great word and a great one-day revival. We're going to call it a one-day revival. It's going to be a phenomenal time. God bless y'all. Have a good night. Good, good day. Thank you.